Hello. Hi, everyone. Um, welcome to the E Ways Goose uh, and to Coaches. Here we are. Here we are. Back at it. <laughs> uh, my name is Elena Wilcox. I'm um, James Lindsay. Yeah. Um, and here we are, ready to uh, to E celebrate. Hopefully for the last time. Hopefully next year we can be back in person. Um, for those of you who don't know, a Ways Goose is a party that a master printer would hold as, at the changing of the seasons for uh for his apprentices and uh it's a long-standing printing tradition and it, we've made it into our tradition where we don't really print anything but we <laughs> eat some hot dogs and we um and we usually have some drinks and to that and we found a really disgusting bottle of rosé so we just want to toast you all and say happy ways goose happy ways goose <laughs> it tastes a little like cotton candy if it was warm and fizzy. <laughs> um, yeah, I think right about now we'd be uh, running out of mustard. About that. About that, yeah. Yeah, the first, uh, well, actually, we'd be kind of in the thick of it at this point, yeah. I guess. Yeah, yeah. People would be eating, people would be having some drinks, buying books. Some witty repartee. There we'd be repartee, both witty and unwitty, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so what we have planned for you this evening is just a short little half hour. There will be no readings in typical Ways Goose style. We have a couple of fun things for you. Um, the first thing I want to do is acknowledge that Coach House, where we are right now, is on uh, the traditional territories of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat people, and is now home to people from many First Nations, uh, Inuit and Métis. Uh, Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 and the Williams Treaties, and we're very grateful to be here. James, that's a nice t-shirt you're wearing. <laughs> Thank you for noticing, Alana. It's my official Coach House t-shirt. Show that, us the back. Show the us iconic. The back. Okay, I'll just stand in a way, a normal way a person would to show you the back. Is that the poem that's carved into our lane? I don't know. I can't see, is it? <laughs> And where can people watching this e Ways Goose procure a t-shirt like that? They can get it from us. I think for years now, I think years is accurate, people would ask for Coach House t-shirts. So here they are. Um, Tally, our brilliant tech person who we should say is running the whole show. If you could see what we see, you'd see Tally right now. Um, Tally will drop a link into the chat. I know a lot of you already bought them, but if you have it, this is your chance. We are getting low on our first batch. We will be making more, but we're getting low. So if you want a Coach House t-shirt, grab them now or this leads us to our next part we're having a bit of a a giveaway if you will oh no first we're going to talk about the sale oh, we'll talk about the sale for okay teaser there is a giveaway coming but first there is a sale starting right now right this very moment everything that's not new so books published um within the last month or so just our fall selection everything on the website that's a book before it, that before, before that, that before the bad new books 25 percent off get it well the getting's good it'll be over by 8 p.m i believe this is what they call a fire sale don't say fire in the coach house fire no. and books don't get along i am the sales and marketing coordinator so i should probably know. i'm not the safety <laughs> health and safety guy at all so. but get it while the getting's good everything's 25 percent off that's pretty good so get it up and we'll get it out to you as soon as we can um, and while you're watching, we have a couple short things for you to watch, but while you're doing that, if you want to think, we would love to, we've been reminiscing a lot about Waze Geese past. Oh, the Waze Geese of yore. Um, and we'd love to hear if you have any like super fun uh, memories from Waze Geese past. You mean like when Molly Ringwall came? Yeah, don't everybody put that in the chat. We know Molly Ringwall came, we're aware. But you can add, if there's other celebrities you want us to try and procure for future Waze Geese. Yeah. Um, as long as they are not in Pretty in Pink. Yeah. So you could put that in the chat too. Uh, but yeah, share your favorite coach, house, Waze Goose, Waze Geese memory. I've been coming to these since I was in my early 20s myself. I used to work at Book City in the annex where Atlanta also used to work a long time ago, which isn't there anymore at all, but it, it used to be the closest bookstore to Coach House. And so I'd be coming by after work around 5.30 or so here, just blown away by the idea you could get a free hot dog and be in the proximity of some of your favorite writers and stay here way too late. I was like, at a certain point of staying here, you'd be like, shouldn't this be over by now? Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't, it just kept going. It did, it did. This one will be the opposite of that. Yes. We'll, be, we'll have you out of here in, in half an hour. Nah, in joking. fact, 
I think that if it's a baby Waze goose, we should call it a Waze gosling. Aww. Um, so yeah, so be sure to order from our from our amazing sale. Um, it does not include our front list books because we would really prefer you to go to some independent independent bookstores near you and to support them by buying books. So, um, but all our backlist uh, super sale for you. Um, another thing, the contest that James alluded to. Yeah, I just gave it away. <laughs> <laughs> so our friend Gregory Betts uh, let us know that he found. I don't know why he was looking at this, but there is a map. Tally, you want to put the map up? Bring There's it up, Tally. map of mammoth and mastodon bones in Toronto. You did not see this coming. There's all of Ontario, too. It's like, we'll, we'll zoom into. But if we look at this map, you see there's a little push pin. That push pin is right. Tally's doing a great job zooming in. That push pin is right <laughs> on Coaches. It's right in BP Nickel Lane. It's right back there, almost like directly where the poem is. We have no idea if this is true. We tried to track down the archaeologists. I emailed not. them so many times. It didn't hear anything back. So right off the bat, do you have any information about this? Anyone knows about the Mastodon that might have lived right here at Coach House? We'd Drop love it to in hear the about chat. it. Yeah. But more to the point today, we're going to imagine that Coach House past had a pet Mastodon. If that is true, what would the name of the pet Mastodon of Coach House be? That's we, what Whoever comes up with the best Mastodon name will win a free t-shirt. The size will be your choice. Tonight. Tonight. So drop the names in the chat tonight. We'll, we'll talk about them. We're going to pick one at the end. Um, and we'll say, well, we can uh, be in touch with us and we'll send you a t-shirt. It's that simple, but we need to name this Mastodon. We have the official mascot of the squirrel. But yeah. we could go a bit bigger now, really a little big, bit bigger, a little bit bigger, and we're going to name a whole mastodon. So what are they? Are? Drop them in. Also, if you have any further information about the veracity of this mastodon claim, we would love to know about it. Um, would you like to introduce the first video part of our evening? Yes, yes. I had a wonderful walking tour with a coach house author, friend of the press, Sean McHale and author of the tr iconic Trouble with Brunch uh, and Stroll, another just amazing, incredible book. Um, and he took me on a walking tour all around here. We started right at Coach House. We went out to the lane. He walked all around this. If, if you're not in Toronto, if you've never been to Coach House, um, we're sort of in the middle of University of Toronto on the North End, kind of. And it's a very old neighborhood. There's a lot of Victorian houses around here. There's a lot of history about uh, around this neighborhood. Um, I could go into it more, but instead of that, I'll let Sean, who's a professional walking tour person. But before we start, just to note, for those of you who are feeling like you've been robbed by not getting a tour of the inside of the coach house, mm -hmm. we did that last e Waze Goose. So if True. you go to our YouTube channel, if you just search YouTube coach house Waze Goose, it's the only one. And you'll see a full tour of the inside of the coach house. But this is the tour of the outside, which you would be seeing if you were here because you would be eating your hot dog outside. It's true. It's a much bigger space outside. Too. It is there's, a lot bigger. there's more to talk about. Really. Fewer printing presses. There are fewer printing presses, uh, more history, more people. Uh, but we'll toss it over to Sean. And when we're done that, we're going to come back. We'll talk some mammoth names, maybe revisit some ways goose memories. So keep dropping them in the chat. And we have more fun things after the tours. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's some more stuff coming. You should get yourself a hot dog and possibly a beverage. Whatever you can not do. Not this right rose. No, no, not the rose. But a hot dog, sure. Or any other thing you got. A glass of water would do even. All right, here we go. I'm McAuliffe. I'm an author with Coach House. Uh, I did a few books with them, The Trouble with Brunch and uh, Stroll, Psychogeographic Walking Tours of Toronto. Today we're going to just take a quick walking tour around the Coach House, just to kind of um, give the feeling of what the Ways Goose, Goose might be like and what you might see if, uh, if it was normal times. Normal times this would be filled with hundreds of people milling about, drinking beer, uh, being socially, socially, socially awkward, <laughs> um, because that's what happens at a lot of literary events, because we're not used to talking to each other, which is mostly on our computers. Um, so we're actually not holding the Ways Goose, because, not because of any safety protocols, just to avoid the awkwardness. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a real Coach House for these uh, mansions. Um, 
that uh, we're here on Huron Street, uh, and the coach house is here. And it's almost been lost a few times, you know, with the, uh, you know, this is very valuable land, but, um, but it's still here. And what's really neat about it is that we actually make something physical in the city and people live around here. Like most book publishers, uh, the books are, you know, done offshore in some factory out in a suburb. Here at Coach House, it's actually, they actually make them inside. Um, and it's how we used to do things. We used to live and work near each other. But if we come through here, uh, through the Coach House, it's actually kind of two Coach Houses connected by a bridge over top. If you come out into the lane there, This lane lay is known as B.P. Nickel Lane. Uh, B.P. Nickel was a um, poet that was uh, associated with Coach House, died far too early, um, and maybe 15 years ago or so, uh, some of the Coach House folks carved one of his poems into the concrete of the alley here. A lake, a line, sorry, a lake, a lane, a line, alone. Uh, B.P. Nickel. In the city around the same time, uh, renamed it after him because that's what we do here. Um, so you get this bit of you know, concrete poetry is the joke. Uh, I love this spot because you have this Victorian building here, this kind of like shacks, these wonderful shacks here. And then behind me is that modern building built in 1968, which was Rochdale College, which was a, an experimental um, education thing. Uh, in, the, in the late 60s, they gave hippie kids hundreds of thousands of dollars to start a college. Um, but it became a, uh, eventually became a retirement home and, and affordable housing because the experiment went a little too experimental. And then if you look at this side, there's Robart's Library, the giant concrete uh, turkey slash um, peacock, whichever, I think if you like it, you call it a peacock. If you don't, you like to call it a turkey. Um, and that opened in 74, I wanna say. Um, so you have like, these two really modern, brutalist, uh, buildings uh, and then you have this kind of intimate Victorian laneway so it's a really neat setting and uh, let's go for a little bit of a walk about okay we can just do some walking footage now Uh, we're out in front of uh, Rochdale College now, or what was Rochdale College, and this is the uh, statue to the uh, memorial to the unknown student. Um, and I think that is a sculptor, is it? It's also unknown to me. Um, but uh, when Rochdale, the experimental college, was going, this guy used to be uh, face thin and looking down. Um, and the story I've been told is that when it got converted to uh, kind of regular residences, they thought it was too weird to have this kind of slightly sad student uh, facing inwards. So they, they, they turned him around and now he's looking at George Lee. Um, still sad and unknown and, and cramming for midterms or something like that. All right, we're here at um, Lur in Sabina. Uh There's the Miles Nadal Jewish Community Center, the Jewish Y, as sometimes known. Uh, but you see behind me there are these uh, dominoes, uh, large granite dominoes. Um, it's a sculpture by Susan Shell and Mark Holmes. Um, and uh, in the old days, I don't know, 25 years ago, uh, this used to be a place where men, older men, would kind of sit and play dominoes and, and you know, chess and that sort of thing. A nice public, almost European public square. But then in 97, when the um, the Spadina streetcar opened. There used to be the Spadina bus, uh, which was immortalized in the song. Uh, but the Spadina streetcar went in, the one we know today, and they dug all this up uh, because the streetcar goes underground and it circles around this intersection uh, in Spadina Station. So that's when you get off the subway and get right onto the streetcar. And so, as an homage to those guys who used to play uh, dominoes, the artist put in these uh, giant dominoes, and now it's a place to sit and for pigeons to hang out. Um, and that sort of thing. It's a nice kind of uh, echo of the people that were there. Um, and also, you can see behind me there's um, three plaques there. Those plaques are for the Spadina Expressway. Uh, there was supposed to be an expressway in the 70s that was going to come down and destroy neighborhoods and 
dump all this traffic out in Chinatown and there was a big kind of community activist rise up and, and finally Bill Davis stopped in 1971. So it's a corner with a lot of uh, interesting history. And the back part of the park here, to have another literary connection, is Matt Cohen Park. Uh, he was a Toronto writer who also died too early uh, of cancer. And uh, he, had, um, he had a book called, or a short story called Spadina Time, about the rhythms of Spadina Avenue. So that park is named after him. And there's a few plaques in the park uh, with excerpts of his writing. So if you're ever at Florence Spadina and you need a you know, contemplative break, break, walk behind the dominoes and, and read some from Matt Cohen. Okay, we're at Sussex and uh, Spadina here for our last stop on this quick little walkabout. Uh, on the southwest corner, that big slab, it's a very typical slab apartment from like the 60s and 70s in Toronto, but it's known as uh, affectionately as the Devil Slab because it's 666 Spadina. I kind of love that they didn't decide to change the you know number, uh, they just left it. Um, and now we're, th there's this kind of U of T utility building here, this big brutalist thing, I don't really know what it does. But what's interesting is that I mentioned the Spadina Expressway that was supposed to come down. Um, so for a while when that was on the books, uh, the new stuff that was built had to be set back from the roadway. So you have like these, uh, all up and down Spadina, there's a few existing uh, right-of-ways that never got developed. There's one in front of the uh, Devil Slab, and they're actually filling it in with, I think, townhomes now, finally, uh, 45, 50 years after the end of the Spadina Expressway. And you have this little ghost space here, in front of the Athletic Center at U of T, you've got that space. If you go to the Toronto Archives to the north, there's that kind of ghost space of the right of way. So uh, I don't know about other kind of ghosts, but I know about uh, you know, urban planning ghosts that sort of exist and kind of hang out uh, among us. And so if you're ever really, if, when you finally do get to go to the uh, Ways Goose, hopefully next year, and it does get too awkward because it will, uh, you can go for a little neighborhood walk and there's lots to distract yourself with. Thanks. awkward a bunch of writers and poets being awkward hard to imagine <laughs> yeah this is already a little awkward just three of us here. i can't imagine what the full waste group is like i can't even remember man sean knows everything knows about everything. this city what a what a great treat that is to have thank you sean story. and if you are interested in hearing more of sean both his books the trouble with brunch and stroll are 25 percent off until eight o'clock so get your book stroll in particular is a whole book of interesting walking tours in Toronto. So if you'd like to expand on that, stroll. That's 40 more minutes you have. Yeah. Next up, um, we volunteered some of our authors uh, to play a literary game. Um, you may have heard of it. It's called Exquisite Corpse. Some people call it Consequences. Um, it was invented in, some say 1925, some say 1918, by the Surrealists. Of course, the Surrealists couldn't agree on a date. Um, and it's a game that can be done by drawing or writing. So you draw a picture or write a paragraph, and then you fold it over so that the next person only sees the very last line or the very edge of your drawing, and they go from there. And so we did that with some of our writers, and we have a pretty amazing and not very cohesive story <laughs> that emerged um, from their brilliant minds. So. Should we just dive right in and watch the exquisite corpse video? And keep those names coming. Yes, please. <laughs> the topic was disappearance. It all started with Amelia Earhart. I Googled her but it was not what I suspected. But it was not what I expected. I mean, I guess it's hard, really, to truly understand what to expect when a grizzly bear shows up at your house looking for work. Nevertheless, surprise. That was all that I felt when I answered the door and found Millie, resplendent in brown fur, clutching a red toolbox in her long claws. I was wondering, she said, her voice oddly high for a bear, but then there I go again with my expectations. If you have any odd jobs around the house that I might do for you, you can pay me in salmon. You can pay me in salmon. The boy followed Cheryl into the office at the back of the shop, 
a hand-sewn smock from home clutched in his little fists. I don't even have to be fresh. I'll take the day-olds. Day-olds. Rehearsed that at home with his mom, most likely. Cheryl slumped into her chair and looked him up and down. Was he even tall enough to see over the lip of the wash tub? You don't need me to take you to the bathroom or anything, right? I wipe myself, ma'am. I wipe myself, ma'am. Well, wonders never cease, she said pettishly. You don't need me to tell you where you can stick the gold star without coming to you. Across the horizon, a crone blimp angled into view. It bore a message across its envelope that was just barely legible to anyone confined to the lithosphere. It read, somewhat portentously, down with hygiene. As if to lend its own voice to the tumultuous proceedings, a pair of trousers flew out of a window from a nearby four-story walk-up, followed by a Gaizinian dream machine, which was dashed to smithereens on the street. A stray sprocket cut a dangerous arc against the sky, and for a moment, catching one of the sun's ray beams, glinted into the eyes of everyone assembled for the heated disputation. So you can wipe yourself. Civilization thanks you, your fellow man thanks you, but you'll get nothing from me except quiet contempt. Admiration is for saps, suckers, and reprobates. Admiration is for saps, suckers, and reprobates. That was a good start, but I needed more. Who wouldn't when finding themselves alone in an elevator with Norman F. Ackley himself, inventor of the anti-gravity sock and the sole shareholder of Ackley's footwear? The voice recorder was working silently in my pocket. The elevator itself had squealed to a halt between the 33rd and 34th floors thanks to an envelope of cash that I pushed into the maintenance guy's hand. Ackley was in trouble, big trouble, but he wouldn't admit it. How wonderful those anti-gravity socks had felt when first you pulled them on. How airy and liberating, how happy everyone had been didn't the world deserve some happiness? Millions, then billions of pairs had been sold, and when people reflected on the new frictionless world they were fortunate enough to live in, it was, more often than not, the beaming face of Norman F. Ackley that came to mind. But Ackley had never revealed the secrets of the miraculous gel which made his socks work, and now the gel had gone bad. Over months of slow, subtle reaction, the nation's feet had become infected. Phalanges were frozen, metatarsals were mortified, heels became a horror. I myself had stopped using crutches only a week earlier. The whole country was after Ackley's blood. Yet, here he was, the man himself, brushing off my questions and acting like I was asking him for business advice. It was said he had a messiah complex and believed himself to be untouchable. But when the elevator commenced to, to move again, I knew it would be with a straight drop to the basement. For there, a surprise was being prepared for Norman F. Ackley. Meanwhile, all I had to do was keep him talking. Meanwhile, all I had to do was keep him talking, which certainly won't be a problem. I mean, I am a gifted conversationalist, a raconteur, a weaver of tales and wonders, a wingman to the stars, a perfect dinner guest. I'm the electric pink bunny that just keeps going and going and going on any topic imaginable, from real estate rates in Macau to the correct temperature and serving size of a chicken parmo in Middlesbrough. A parmo being a chicken cutlet, pounded flat, breaded, deep fried, and topped with bechamel sauce and mozzarella cheese. Or perhaps just a simple debate to pass the hours, like the pros and cons of Nicolas Cage. Or resolving bigger questions like, is cereal soup? Or, do you need lettuce, onions, and tomatoes on your plant-based burger? Or, what is the condition of whack, and why do we prefer to be in it rather than out of whack? Or, for once and for all, just what the heck is a poem? Because when I was a kid, you knew what a poem was because it rhymed, and you could remember it. 
But nowadays, people are doing all sorts of things with newspapers and word search puzzles and erasers and airport codes and poems that loop around in circles and sound like math problems or lists of addresses or poems that are bits of letters dragged across a photocopier in an interesting way. I mean, what's next? If you can tape a banana to a wall and call it art, is slipping on the peel a poem? Seriously, what's next? Oh wait, I've been doing all the talking, haven't I? Hey, can you hear me? Wake up! Hey, wake up! When she said this, I was not furious. Roosters, the morning's modern calligraphers, betray an indelicate carelessness. But in this morning's distance is the faint clatter of words appearing on a screen. Sometimes when you munch spinach, you acquire a disease of meat. I yodeled to the poet, your assassinating opinion on optimism makes my solitude gleam. The poem thrums momentarily. Cough. Cough until you choke. But don't worry, it might just be the wing of a housefly lodged in your throat. That was silly. <laughs> we hope that you enjoyed that even half as much as we did. Um, thank you so much to our authors for, you know, taking the time to write some weird things. I thought I'd show off some of like this figure, some of the books you could get on sale or disintegration of four parts or, or sky writings or uh, because the sun, all of these on sale, like the savings. Look, two Suzette Mayer book on sale 25 percent off okay, that's 50 percent when you can combine them I'm, and that's why james doesn't do our math um, <laughs> let's uh let's cruise through some of these masculine oh, okay. names shall we yeah it's my job to scroll we yeah. got uh masthead adon oh ouch that's how harsh captain poetadon of course lovely master days goose beep the mastodon oh, yes 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 one, yeah. Uh, I can't even pronounce that one. <laughs> Bones. Bones is good. Cortosaurus. I like that. Coach. Masthead. BP Mastodon. BP Mastodon. It's cute. Master Eleanor. Doug. <laughs> Doug. Doug would be a good name for a Mastodon. Masterpiece. Master Poet. <laughs> We're just scrolling. I hope you don't mind watching us. Veronica A. Lake. Oh, A. Lake and A. Line. Got it. Got it. Big font. Oh. Nice. Bevy Don Tusky. Dummy. And then just a lot of clapping for the, for the exquisite corpse, which is great. Meta Metadata. Who did that? <laughs> Someone's That's in publishing. A publishing <laughs> Uh, someone's asking what we're naming. We're naming the Mastodon who may have left a bone somewhere in the near vicinity some years ago. This is mostly pre, here. Pre-pandemic. Yeah, we didn't find it yet. And the, the University of Windsor, if you're out there, I would love to know more about this, please. Um, I don't think we can choose a winner right now, can we? I think maybe we have to... Do we have to sleep on it? Well, we have to read them all over more carefully in case we cruise by some. Um, can we all hang on? We'll we'll send a... We'll send a uh, an email to the winning, the winning Mastodon name. But well, we won't in have a few all, minutes. We we'll have this information. In a we few will because they'll have signed okay. up to watch our. That's webinar. true. That's true. I just want to make sure that the winner gets their their t-shirt official Snappy, coach house t-shirt. T -shirt. And you'll notice that we did not actually put the words coach house anywhere on it. So. Don't need to. That's so. Uh, the other thing you can do is. Um, a lot of people don't know that that's a printing press, our logo and the front of the t-shirt. Uh, somebody once asked me if it was a picture of an octopus fighting a helicopter. The answer is no, it is not an octopus fighting a helicopter. It may be a mastodon fighting a helicopter. It could, there are some tusk-like things there. But really it's a printing press. So if anyone asks while you're wearing your snazzy t-shirt, that's what you can tell them. I was wearing this t-shirt at a playground because I was there with my son. That's where we go. And uh, another child said to me, what's that on your t-shirt? I said, what do you think it looks like? He said a dumb alien. But he was a kid. Let's see now. It can be anything you want. Yeah. It can be anything you want. That's, that's the thing. 
Um, do we have any other ways these memories that we want? Anybody wants to share? No one can remember because it gets a little hazy at a certain point. That is point. true. That is true. And not just because it's dark. Yeah. Um, well, we promised half an hour and we're at 7.33. We have 27 minutes for you to shop. So maybe we'll just uh, wander on our way. I think maybe we're not going to drink the rest of this rosé. <laughs> uh, but maybe we'll go find ourselves a hot dog and dream of the Waze Goose next year because we would love nothing more than to see all of you in person. Um, so stay well, stay healthy, and um, well, the names are still coming in. We hate to... Uh... Wait, can we do a couple more before we go? I like Mighty Dong Young. <laughs> Is that it? Oh, and okay. There's more coming. Keep going. Oh down. my god. You Fluffy. Fluffy. You guys are really squeaking a minute at the wire here. Mr. Odin's Aphrodite. Good. I really like Fluffy. <laughs> Name for Mastodon. I mean, they're fluffy. They are fluffy. It's accurate. So we, so we hear. Anyway, we will, uh, we will leave you to your evening. Um, we're so happy that you joined us, and we hope this was everything that you hoped for. <laughs> um, and we'll see you next year in person, right out there in our parking lot. We'll save you a hot dog for real fun, and you can tell us, share your favorite virtual waste goose memories with us. Then that'll be really exciting. <laughs> There'll be like two of them. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> Have a good night. Bye. Bye.